focused on in the spotlight. And so really that's what today is very much about. Uh, it's about uh, highlighting some of the work that has been done in the field, as well as underscoring some issues that need attention. So the goals of today's workshop are to explore models of cross-sector work that may reduce the prevalence and consequences of obesity, to identify case studies and cross-sector initiatives that engage partners from diverse fields, to identify lessons learned and barriers to established cross-sector initiatives, and to engage participants to identify potential applications for their communities and organizations. What I would like to do, though, is take a minute to uh, acknowledge the work of the, the working group in planning this, uh, this workshop. Uh, the, our members included Debbie Chang from the Moors, David Fukuzawa from the Kresge Foundation, Lisa Loy from the Bipartisan Policy Center, Emily Ramirez from Salud America, and Sylvia Rowe from SR Strategy. And as a team, we've attempted really to put together a top-notch agenda for you today. And of course, we could not have done that without the uh, superb help of the IOM staff, including Sarah Sieger, Siegenhorn, Leslie Sim, Sarah Siegel, Heather Cook, Lynn Parker, and Bill Dietz. So as a background to set some context uh, to the workshop, in 2012, the IOM published the Accelerating Progress in Obesity Prevention Report, or APOP. The inspirational vision of the APOP report was towards a society of healthy children, healthy families, healthy communities, in which all people realize their full potential and develop the competencies required to interact successfully with their surrounding environments. There's an urgent need to employ large-scale large transformative approaches focused on multi-level environmental and policy changes within interconnected systems to reduce the threat of obesity and sustain an enduring impact. The APOP report called out specific environments in which people interact. These included the school environment, the message environment, the physical activity, the food and beverage, and the healthcare and work environments. All these environments are impacted by activities simultaneously occurring across multiple sectors. By considering how these synergies that stem from combined cross-sectoral interactions may further accelerate progress in preventing obesity, an explicit focus on cross-sectoral work that describes this potential seems warranted. So we posit that achieving this APOP vision requires mobilizing the population through engagement and leadership at all levels and across all sectors. So then, what do we mean by sector or cross-sector work? What, in fact, is a sector? Classically defined, a sector is an industry or a market sharing common characteristics, or it's a distinct part or branch of a nation's economy or society, or of a sphere of activity such as education, or it's an area of the economy in which businesses share the same or related product or service, in other words, various definitions do exist, and we must consider how they apply to this work on preventing obesity. Whereas sectors may be defined as being distinct, they do not operate in a vacuum. In fact, sectors are very much interdependent when the objective is to produce something meaningful. Considering this cross-sector work then, Mel Ming from our, um, from our Obesity Solutions Roundtable tells us, Cross-sector work suggests to us opportunities to go beyond what might be normal partnering or normal day-to-day -day transactional behaviors and engagements and to reach institutions, disciplines, and bodies of knowledge that are, that are beyond our own. So then how do we work, in fact, across sectors? Successful approaches in cross-sector work include the recognition that there are shared goals, that projects have shared ownership, involve shared decision making, but also that there's a shared burden being carried that hopefully will lead to shared rewards. Cross-sector work will involve collaboration, where agencies come together and change their individual approaches to a goal to allow sharing of resources and responsibilities. This joining together will allow for synergies that move us beyond what any person or group can accomplish alone. The intentional pursuit of collaborative approaches built on mutual respect and trust may lead to solutions that last. Collaborative actions, such as joint planning, pooled resources, 
evaluation of outcomes across sectors are examples of this type of approach. Other cross-sector work may involve cooperation, which reflects an informal arrangement in which individual agencies or stakeholders maintain separate mandates and responsibilities, but do some work together to meet a common goal. Certainly, cross-sector work involves coordination, where there's a harmonious function of functioning of parts for effective results, helping each other without changing basic way of doing business. Cross-sector work may also involve alliances, which represent relationships involving seemingly disparate non-profit or government organizations that may have common ground relevant to obesity prevention. The common ground allows groups to leverage each other's strength to achieve mutual benefit and does not necessarily focus on obesity per se. Therefore, cross-sector approaches to obesity prevention and management may take various forms, shapes, However, as work is done, shared ownership, transparency in decision-making, mutual respect and trust, and an authenticity in purpose and process are important attributes of such approaches. So then how did we organize the workshop for today? Well, we could have done this in many different ways, but as a group we landed, in the end, on organizing around a socio-ecological model with special emphasis on several cross-cutting issues. Using this socio-ecological approach, we identified five examples from the field that represent cross-sectoral collaboratives that address obesity at the level specified. However, we also felt strongly about highlighting several important structural, overarching, and cross-cutting issues that will need to be addressed in order to generate solutions to the obesity challenges in our communities and organizations and to ensure that successful attempts can be scaled up and sustained over time. So the presentations of examples from the field at the national, the state, the county and regional tribal levels um, will be preceded, in fact, by four presentations dealing with these cross-cutting issues. These are health equity, sustainability, leadership and measurement. Health equity has been identified as a cross-cutting and overarching factor to be addressed if successful programs are to reduce obesity burden equitably across the population. The current reality is that communities of color and those with low incomes are generally more likely to have higher prevalence of obesity than those who live in mostly white or more affluent communities. This workshop would like to explore how cross-sector collaborations can affect health inequity and inequality while working on collaborative models to prevent or treat obesity. Sustainability is recognized as a cross-cutting issue uh, as obesity solutions need a vision for long-term impact. Grant-funded projects tend to, do work, tend to work well to identify promising practices, but are more difficult to standardize and scale up to reach the population over prolonged periods of time. As a result, we'd like to explore how cross-sector collaboratives that address obesity may be funded, financed, and positioned for economic success. What role does economic development play in this context? How may changes in the physical, psychosocial, socioeconomic environment that generate promising outcomes be sustained? And when and how should policy be leveraged to ensure long-term attention to the matter? Leadership. We'd like to explore the issue of leadership in terms of how individuals may be identified and engaged, the role that established leaders may play in mobilizing and leveraging resources, and what kind of leadership structures are needed to successfully engage stakeholders and empower people with authenticity and respect while building trust. And the final cross-cutting issue we highlight is that of measurement. How do we know we're generating success? How do we continue to keep stakeholders at the table? What does the report card of our efforts look like and how often does it get shared with the community? The Institute of Medicine Evaluating Progress in Obesity Prevention Report, or also referred to as EPOP, describes the need for obesity prevention efforts to be evaluated appropriately. That evaluation will be used to inform and improve decision making. That tested interventions may be identified and used and that the most promising approaches will be disseminated widely. This workshop is interested in, in exploring how cross-sectoral 
efforts may depend on evaluation and measurement, what's being done in the field today, and how various sectors may need and respond to different types of measurement and evaluation. So regarding the overarching considerations, we asked each of the speakers on our panel today to address the following questions. What's the importance of the particular overarching consideration that they're presenting to cross-sector work for obesity prevention, treatment and weight maintenance in communities, organizations and institutions? Thinking of cross-sector initiatives generally, what lessons have been learned with regard to the particular overarching consideration? What would you recommend to accelerate, accelerate movement forward in cross-sectoral work? And what are the most important and relevant issues and provide examples of how these have come to life? Of course, we realize that the speakers are only human, and so we ask them to do all of this in 15 minutes or less. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to introduce Larry Soler from the Partnership for a Healthier America to introduce our speakers. And, uh, and, and facilitate the panel discussion at the end of the presentations. Thank you.